Welcome back to Fundamentals of AC Circuits. In this video, we're going to discuss low pass and high pass filters. So the purpose of this video is that you will be able to design a low pass filter or a high pass filter using capacitors or inductors and to draw the frequency response of a passive filter using a Bode plot. So a low pass filter allows signals with lower frequencies to pass while rejecting higher frequencies. So imagine that you have a particular source voltage. That voltage is going to have a sine wave with a peak value and a frequency. A low pass filter will allow that signal to pass through the circuit to the output when you have a lower frequency and it will reject or not allow the signal to pass when you have a higher frequency. And we have what's called the critical frequency which sort of determines the line between frequencies that pass and frequencies that are rejected. So with a low pass filter, when we say that the signal passes, what we're actually looking for is the output voltage measured. When a signal passes, the input voltage and the output voltage will be very, very close in value. At a minimum, a signal that will pass will have an input voltage of a certain value and the output voltage will be 0 0.707 times the input voltage. So 0 0.707 times the input, input voltage or higher represents a signal that is passing. If I were to send a signal into the, a low pass filter, crank up the frequency very high and then measure the output voltage, let's say I send in a signal with a peak of five volts, if I send the signal to be very, very high, I might measure an output voltage of 0.2 volts. That's a signal that's not passing. A signal that will pass, say I put in a, a signal with 5 volts, and I get out a signal of 4.98 volts. That's a signal that's passing. So a low pass filter will allow low frequencies to pass while rejecting frequencies that are higher. And again, that point of passing versus being rejected is determined by what we call the critical frequency of your filter. The pass band is defined as the range of frequencies that are allowed to pass within a specific limit. So in a low pass filter, this is considered the pass band. Everything from zero hertz up until what we call the critical frequency, that's your pass band. Those are all the, the frequencies that are allowed to pass through the filter. And the critical frequency is the point at which your output is 0 0.707 times your input. So when I have an output that's 0 0.707 times my input or higher, that's a signal that's considered passing. As soon as I measure a voltage at the output that's below this value, the signal is considered not passing through the filter. So again, the critical frequency, we also call that the cutoff frequency or the minus three dB frequency. That'll most likely make more sense as we continue. Um, that's the, the critical frequency is the frequency at which the output voltage is 70.7% of the maximum or your input voltage. So filter responses, meaning if I were to draw a graph which shows the response of a particular filter as frequency changes, um, we, when we draw these graphs, and today we're going to learn how to draw a graph called a Bode plot, um, they're often drawn in terms of decibels, which are defined using this relationship right here. A decibel is 10 times the logarithm of output power divided by input power. Um, another useful def definition for a decibel when we're measuring voltages is 20 times the logarithm of output voltage divided by input voltage. And this is the definition we're going to be using today for the decibel. So we're going to use this. It's a relationship. And we're going to use this relationship to generate um, our Bode plots a little bit later on. The decibel is a ratio, so it does not have a unit. Again, one of the very few um, numbers in this class that you will write without a unit. So an RC low pass filter is shown below. Notice it's just a resistor in series with a capacitor. But the voltage is measured across the capacitor. When you're measuring the voltage across the capacitor, your output voltage, uh, this becomes a low pass filter. When the input is a DC value, so basically a signal with no frequency, zero hertz, the output equals the input because XC is going to be infinitely large. But as you increase that input frequency, XC is going to decrease and your output 
will gradually decrease as well until you reach your frequency where XC and R are equal. That is called the critical frequency or FC of the filter. And here's our formula for calculating FC. FC is one divided by two pi RC. That's your critical frequency for your filter. And that's the frequency you'll use to determine your pass band. And your pass band is, is basically going to be that limit between the frequencies that pass through the filter and the frequencies that are considered to be rejected. So when you reach the critical frequency of an RC low pass filter, your critical frequency will be determined by one divided by two pi RC. At this particular frequency, the output voltage of your, of your signal, or you can think of the peak value of the sine wave you're sending in, will be 0.707 times your input value. And if we were to calculate the uh, decibels for your output versus your input, you're going to end up with 20 times the logarithm of V out divided by Vn. Since V out is equal to 0.707 times Vn, V out divided by Vn is 0.707. So when I plug this into my formula for calculating decibels, I see that at the critical frequency, my ratio of output to input using the definition for decibels is negative three. That's why the critical frequency is also called the negative three dB frequency. A Bode plot is going to be a graphical representation of a filter. It's going to give you a very clear picture of the filter of the frequencies that will pass through the filter and the frequencies that will not. This is an example of a Bode plot on the screen. Now it's drawn on what we call semi-log paper, meaning that with each um, tick on your axis, your, your, your frequencies increase here tenfold. So if this is a tick on my axis, the next tick is 10 times that. The next tick is 100 times that. It's semi-log paper and that's how it's meant to be used. So that's what we draw on the x-axis and we draw the decibels on the y-axis. So a low-pass filter would have a Bode plot that looks like this, meaning any frequency below the critical frequency, these are frequencies that pass. These are frequencies that are passing through the filter. And as my frequency increases, I'm slowly starting to get away from that level and these represent all the frequencies that will not pass through the filter. As my decibel values decrease more and more, that's representative of a frequency that is not passing through the filter. So one of the ways that we can look at a Bode plot is that a tenfold change in frequency, meaning going from FC to 10 times FC, results in a 20 volt decrease in my output voltage. So whatever I put in, by the time I get to 10 times the frequency, my output voltage has dropped to a 20 volt decrease. That's what a Bode plot will show us. So when you're looking at a Bode plot, the flat area represents frequencies that are passing through the filter. So any frequency less than the FC is a passing frequency. As we extend, extend past that critical frequency, we're gonna see the voltage drop dramatically. And these represent frequencies that aren't passing because as I measure that output voltage, it's going to be significantly less than what I put in. You can also create an RL low pass filter by using an inductor and a resistor. Notice that the resistor is the component you will measure the voltage out from. The critical frequency for a RL low pass filter is R divided by 2 pi L. So as the input frequency is increased, XL will increase and V out will gradually decrease. Think about setting up a voltage divider for this uh, series circuit from taking the voltage across R. So I'm going to have R divided by the total impedance of this circuit times Vn. As I increase the frequency, XL is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which means as I set up my voltage divider, the voltage across R is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's going to come a frequency where the, the output voltage is going to be significantly less than the input voltage, and that's the frequency where uh, your signals are no longer passing. That's your critical frequency, and that frequency is determined by R divided by 2 pi L. 
With the low pass filter con composed of a resistor and an inductor, you have the same relationships for V out as well as your decibel range. And again, this is how we're going to calculate that critical frequency. So here's a comparison of a basic low pass filter constructed from a resistor and a capacitor or an inductor and a resistor. Notice the orientation of an RC versus an RL. Notice how we calculate critical frequency. How we calculate the output voltage. This is the voltage divider. This is a voltage divider and our phase shift. So now let's do some examples. For the low, low pass filter below, we're going to determine the critical frequency, the output voltage at 1 kilohertz, the output voltage at the critical frequency, and the output voltage at 1 megahertz, all for an input voltage of 10 volts. We're going to look at the phase shift between the input and the output, and then we're going to draw our first Bode plot for this filter. The critical, fre uh, the critical frequency is 1 divided by 2 pi RC. The phase shift is the negative tangent to the negative inverse tangent of R over XC, which is negative 45 degrees. This is always going to be true for an RC low pass filter. The phase shift is always going to be negative 45 degrees. The relationship between R and XC is always going to be such that you're going to get that value. And now let's talk about the voltages. At one kilohertz, I have to first calculate XC. Then I'm going to set up a voltage divider where I'm going to look at the voltage across XC at this frequency, 1 kilohertz. To set up my voltage divider, I have to look at the impedance of the capacitor, XC, divided by the impedance of these two components in series. And if you're wondering where this come from, this is basically just taking your rectangular combination of R, R minus JXC, and converting it to polar all that is. So this is our total impedance of the two components combined together going to polar form. So we have 33.86 kilo ohms divided by the square root of 33.86 kilo ohms squared plus 100 ohms squared. So we're combining these together times the input voltage of 10 volts. You get 9.99 volts. So I sent 10 volts in. I got 9.99 volts out. Signals passing. That's what that means. At the critical frequency, XC and R have the same value. So I end up, when I set up my voltage divider, with an output of 7.07 .07 volts. Remember, at FC, this relationship will always be true. You put in 10 volts, you get 70.7% of that out at the critical frequency. So our signal is going to pass. Uh, but barely, like this is the, 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 the highest frequency that's going to be allowed to pass is FC. After this, nothing will pass. So let's say that I look at the frequency when there is 1 megahertz as the frequency for the input. XC is now a lot smaller than it was before. When I set up my voltage divider, I see that the output is 3.21 volts. That's a signal that doesn't pass. I put in 10 volts, I got 3.21 out. That signal is not passing. That's what we call that. So this is a low pass filter that will pass frequencies at FC or below. This is much higher than FC, therefore that signal is not passing. And now we're going to talk about how to draw the Bode plot for this filter. So on your paper, you have semi-log uh, semi paper that looks like mine on the screen. And I'm just going to walk you through the steps for how we draw a Bode plot. You're going to start by labeling the vertical axes. Remember, each division here, each very bolded division here, represents an increase by tenfold. You may not start at zero. What you want to do is start so that your critical frequency will fall somewhere between these two boxes. So I label this as 100 kilohertz which means the next division represents a tenfold increase, 100 kilohertz times 10, 1 megahertz. The next box is 10 times that. So this is how we're labeling this. Every leap here 
is an increase tenfold. And then each smaller division in here, if this is 100 kilohertz, this is 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1 megahertz. That's why we're labeling it this way. So we're going to label the top, the x-axis, with frequencies that increase tenfold with each large division. And you're going to have to pick where you start from. You're starting from a place so that your critical frequency will end up generally in one of the two middle boxes. So here's our critical frequency. Our critical frequency was 338 kilohertz. So if this is 100, this is 200, this is 300, 338 lies somewhere in between 300 and 400. So I'm going to label that as my FC, my critical frequency. Then I'm also going to label 10 times that, which would be right here. Here's one megahertz. We're going to go forward. Notice that these have the same respective points within this box. 100, 200, 300. There's my critical frequency. So 10 times that will be in the same respective point in the next large box here. So that's 10 times FC. We're going to label those two points. So label those on your paper. Remember, remember everything you see me adding to the screen, you should be drawing on your paper. So we're going to start with um, labeling our frequencies. We're going to pick values so that FC will lie somewhere in the second or third box. We're going to label each main division here and it increases by factors of 10. So here's what we have so far. Next, we're going to label the y-axis with values of decibels, starting with zero decibels. So we're going to call this zero decibels. So that's one, two, three. We're going to call that negative three. I'm going to label this negative 10, negative 20, and negative 30. Count everything out and you'll see that it should align. Again, if we label this as zero, go down one, two, three. That's negative three. That's four, six, eight. There's 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. There's 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. There's 30. So I'm labeling the y-axis in terms of decibels, in terms of decibels. But what we're going to do is equate what these decibels mean in terms of actual output voltages. So at zero decibels, this equates to the fact that you're always going to get approximately or very, very, very close to 100% of your input voltage at zero decibels. If I put in 10 volts, I'm going to get out 10 volts or 9.9999 volts. So we'll just say 100%. So zero decibels corresponds to the fact that when I put in a certain amount, I get 100% out. Three decibels or minus three decibels corresponds to the voltage I'm going to get at my critical frequency, which is 70.7% of Vn. If I put in 10 volts, I'm getting 7.07 .07 out. Negative 10 decibels corresponds to 31.6% of your input voltage. If I put in 10 volts, I'm getting 3.16 out. The negative 20 decibel line corresponds to 10% of your input voltage. If I put in 10 volts, I'm getting one volt out at 20 decibels. And at minus 30 decibels, I'm getting 3.16% of my input voltage as the output. If I put in 10 volts, I'm now getting 316 millivolts. So these decibel values are how we label our Bode plot but on the other side, I like to add, what's the real world correlation to these decibel values? These percentages will never change. Your input voltage may change, but the percentages will stay the same no matter what body plot you're drawing. So you can rely on those percentages to stay the same. So now that I've labeled my decibel values and my real world voltage measurements that correlate to those decibel values, I'm going to draw a few more reference points. We need a reference point at the 0 dB line. And we need a reference point at the negative 20 dB line. The reason why I'm drawing data lines is it just makes your curve easier to draw because here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw a dot where FC and my reference point for 0 dB meet. I'm going to draw a dot where 10 times FC and my reference point for negative 20 dB meet. That's my curve or my Bode plot for this filter. I know that frequencies prior or below FC 
will pass. That's where my flat line goes. This represents all the frequencies that'll pass through the filter. And any frequency below this FC point, I know that these frequencies are gonna give me an output voltage of approximately 10 volts. As the frequency increases beyond FC, let's say that I input a frequency that's well beyond one megahertz. Well, now I know I'm gonna get an output that's a little greater than one volt. As the frequency increases, by the time I get to 10 times the frequency, I get one volt as my output and so on. So this is the Bode plot and it just shows you very clearly what frequencies will pass, what frequencies will not pass, and what's my output going to be like based on the frequency that I select. Now this curve is called the actual curve. That means if I had a perfect circuit with, with perfect components and a perfect source and I had absolutely like com perfectly ideal components, that's what my curve would look like. And in a perfect world, everything would automatically pass and at FC, things would just stop passing. In the real world, we have what's called roll-off. Roll-off occurs at negative 3 dB. So we know that at this frequency, we're not going to immediately see a 10 volt output here and then a just complete jump. It's gonna gradually dec decline. We call that roll-off. Your output voltage is gradually going to decline as you increase the frequency. So we're going to draw another reference point at the negative 3 dB line and draw a dot at where that line meets. So this is what's called my actual curve. In the real world, the voltage that we're going to observe across the output is gradually gonna decrease. And once we get to FC, we consider that the point that the output is no longer passing. So in an, in an ideal world, every frequency up to this point would pass through the circuit and I'd have a voltage of exactly what I put in until we hit FC. In the real world, the voltage is going to slightly decrease as that frequency increases. So the voltage is going to decrease some, but we consider that if you hit this point, your output voltage is 70.7% .7 of your input, we're gonna consider anything beyond that point a passing signal. So this is your actual curve that shows what we call the roll off at negative three dB. It's a, it's a curve here and it, it's going to begin at the same point your actual curve is, it's gonna roll off and then it's going to meet your actual curve again. This is what we observe in the real world. So again, the blue curve is your perfect ideal scenario. Every single, every single frequency up until the critical frequency will pass through my filter 100%. That's what we hope for. In the real world, this is what we actually observe. As the frequency increases, our voltage begins to decrease some, but as long as it's above this level, it's acceptable and we consider this to be passing. We consider everything beyond that critical frequency to be not passing. So the blue is your ideal curve, the green is your actual curve, and that's how we draw a Bode plot and that's how we read or interpret a Bode plot. So let's do another example. This time we have an RL low pass filter. We're gonna determine the critical frequency of the filter, the output voltage at FC, for an input of 10 volts, the phase shift, and the Bode plot. So here's your critical frequency. At the critical frequency, the output voltage will always be 0.707 times your input voltage. So that's, that's a relationship that will always be true. And your phase shift will always be negative 45 degrees for a low pass filter. That relationship will also always be true. So we're gonna do the Bode plot again. I'm just going to repeat all the steps. Please draw them along with me on your paper. We're gonna label our major axes. Our critical frequency this time was about 19.89 kilohertz. So I picked this to be 10. If this is 10, this is 20. So 19 will fall right about there. I want my critical frequency to land either in this box or that box. So you're gonna pick these values in factors of 10 so that your critical frequency will lie somewhere in these. So again, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's how we have increases by factors of 10. There's my critical frequency just before 20 kilohertz and 10 times that. I'm gonna label my decibel values on the left. These values will always be the same. We're gonna use these same points for each Bode plot. 
On the right, I'm going to write the real world correlation for the output voltage at each one of those decibel values. So again, at zero decibels, 100% of your input will pass. At negative three decibels, 70.7% of your input will pass. At negative 10 decibels, 31.6 of your input will pass. At negative 20 dB, you have 10%. And at negative 30, you have 3.16%. Now I calculated these voltages here based on the input. The input is 10 volts for this problem. Now I'm going to add my reference points to begin my ideal curve. And there's my ideal. You need these two dots here just so that you can get a nice smooth line from FC to 10 times FC. There's my ideal curve. And then I'm going to draw my actual curve by adding another reference point at the negative 3 dB line and drawing a dot where it meets FC. And then there's your roll off. So this, this picture uh, tells me everything I need to know about this filter. It tells me what frequencies pass. Everything up until FC will pass. It tells me what frequencies will not pass. It tells me the voltage I can expect to measure at the output based on a frequency that I input. So let's say that I input, if this is 10K, let's say that I input eight kilohertz. On my actual curve, I can go across here and I can say, oh, if I put in 8K, I'm gonna get, oh, maybe about eight volts out because that's in between seven and 10. So I can read this Bode plot and automatically know the frequencies that pass, the frequencies that don't pass, and the output I can expect. So here's the design question. We're gonna design an RL low pass filter that will reject all frequencies above 74.5 kilohertz. Use a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. Draw a circuit diagram and Bode plot for this filter. Use VN as seven volts. So if we're gonna design an RL low pass filter that will reject all frequencies above 74.5 kilohertz, that means that's my critical frequency. And I know the value of the resistor, but I need to figure out the value of the inductor. So I'm going to use the equation for critical frequency, plug in the critical frequency, plug in the value for R, and solve that for L using some algebra. So it's going to be 4.7 millihenries. Now I'm going to draw a circuit diagram for an RL low-pass filter. The L comes before the R for a low-pass filter. So there's my diagram. And now I'm going to draw the Bode plot. My critical frequency is 75 kilohertz. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Your decibel values on the left. And then we're going to correlate that to actual output voltages on the right. This time my input is seven volts. So I'm gonna use that as I calculate each percentage for my output voltages. And then I'm going to draw my reference points for the ideal curve. Here's my ideal curve. And then the references for the actual curve showing the roll off. So there's my Bode plot for this filter. Here's one more question related to low pass filters. The input voltage to a low pass RC filter is 8 volts RMS. Find the output voltage at negative 6 dB. So this question will really help to solidify the relationship between decibels and output voltage. Remember the definition for a decibel is 20 times the logarithm of V out over V in. So let's fill in what we know. I know that I want the value at negative 6 dB. I know the output voltage is what I'm trying to find. I know the input voltage is 8 volts. We're just going to solve this. First, divide both sides by 20. And then, in order to uh, eliminate the logarithm, we're going to take each side of the equation, and it's going to become an exponent with a base of 10. 
So we're going to have 10 raised to the negative 0.3 power equals 10 to the logarithm of V out over 8 volts. And that's what's going to cancel your logarithm. So 10 to the negative 0.3 is 0.501. Multiply both sides by 8 and you get an output of 4 volts. So if I have an input of 8 volts, I know that the output at negative 60 B is going to be 4 volts. Now let's move on to high pass filters. A high pass filter will allow signals with higher frequencies to pass and it will reject lower frequencies. So we can see on this curve here that with a high pass filter, as the frequency increases past the critical frequency, the higher frequencies will pass while the lower frequencies are rejected. So same idea as a low pass filter, except now high frequency uh, signals are allowed to pass while lower frequency signals will be rejected. Here's an example of a basic RC high pass filter shown below. Notice now the capacitor and the resistor have switched places. We take the output voltage across the resistor and now we have a RC high pass filter. For the critical frequency of an RC high pass filter, we can use the formula on the screen. FC is one divided by two pi RC. We know that at the critical frequency, the output voltage will be 70.7% of the input voltage. So we have some of the same relationships that we've seen before with a low pass filter. Here's a Bode plot for a high pass filter. We can see that the curve looks a little bit different here. Now we can see that after the critical frequency and beyond, these are the frequencies that are allowed to pass through the filter. And as we get lower than the critical frequency, these are the frequencies that are rejected by the filter. And the output voltage that is allowed to pass becomes less and less the smaller that the frequency gets. Here's an example of a basic RL high pass filter where the voltage, uh, the output voltage is taken across the inductor. So when we set up a filter, we can use resistors and capacitors or resistors and inductors. And this is how you would set up a high pass RL filter. The critical frequency for an RL high pass filter is shown on the screen. Our critical frequency is basically equal to R divided by two pi L. And then of course we have the same relationships for V out and for calculating our decibels as before. So here's a summary of the two high pass filters we've just discussed, our RC high pass filter, the RL high pass filter, how we calculate the critical frequencies, how we can use a voltage divider to calculate the output voltage, and then the phase shift. In this case, our phase shift is going to be um, inverse tangent of XC over R for a high pass RC filter or inverse tangent of R over XL for a high pass RL filter. So now let's do some examples. For the high pass filter below, we're going to determine the critical frequency of the filter, the output voltage V out at 500 Hertz for an input voltage of five volts. Then we're gonna find the output voltage at the critical frequency as well as at 50 kilohertz. We'll figure out the phase shift between the input and the output voltage, and then we're going to draw the Bode plot for this filter. So we'll start with the critical frequency. We have one over two pi RC, comes out to be 10.26 kilohertz. Our phase shift is gonna be the inverse tangent of XC over R, and at the critical frequency that we just calculated, your phase shift is gonna come out to be a positive 45 degrees. So at 500 Hertz, we're first gonna calculate XC and we're gonna get 6.77 kilo ohms for XC at this frequency. Then we're going to plug in that value into our voltage divider to figure out the output voltage that would occur at this frequency. So we're gonna have 330 ohms divided by the square root of 677 kilo ohms squared plus 330 ohms squared times our input of five volts. Keep in mind that the units here are ohms kilo ohms and ohms. So make sure that you type all of that into your calculator properly when you're checking this equation. You should get a very, very low voltage because this is a high pass filter and this is a low frequency. So we can see that the signal doesn't pass because five volts goes in and approximately 0 0.243 volts comes out at this frequency. So the signal does not pass. 
at Fc, our capacitive reactants and the value of our resistance are equal. And we'll get that 3.54 volts comes out of the filter at this point. And remember, at the critical frequency, our output voltage is equal to 0.707 times Vn. So it makes sense that we would get about 3.54 volts coming out at the critical frequency. And then at 50 kilohertz, Xc becomes very, very small. Look at the difference between Xc at 50 kilohertz and at 500 hertz. Xc has become very, very small. And since we have a voltage divider set up here with a very, very small amount of impedance across the capacitor, that means most of the impedance is across the resistor. Therefore, we're gonna have a large output voltage when we perform our voltage divider. And we can see that at 50 kilohertz, 4.9 volts is what is going to be measured at the output. Therefore, we call that a passing signal. So that's an example of a high pass filter and what you would get out at these three different frequencies. Next, I'm going to do the Bode plot for this filter. I'll start with the labels across the top. Again, you're gonna pick your labels based off of what your critical frequency is and generally make sure your critical frequency falls somewhere between the second and third box. There's my critical frequency, 10.26 kilohertz. And this time, since we're doing a Bode plot for a high pass filter, instead of doing 10 times FC, we're gonna do 10% of FC or 0.1 times FC. So our second line is going to occur at 10% of the critical frequency because we're drawing a body plot for a high pass filter and our curve is going to look different than the curve for the low pass filter. Next, I'm gonna label my decibels and that's going to be the same way that we discussed previously for the body plot of a low pass filter. And I'll label my output voltages for each of the decibels shown on the left. Same as before. So right now setting up our body plot for a high pass filter, the only thing that has changed thus far is that our second point that we're marking on the vertical axis here is 10% of FC instead of 10 times FC. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line at the zero decibels horizontal mark and at the negative 20 dB mark. Now that I've got my lines, I can add my two points for my ideal curve. So notice that the ideal curve is now going to be connected um, between my 0.1 FC point and my, ten, and my FC point at the 10.26 kilohertz. Here's my curve. And we can see that after we reach the critical frequency, these are all the frequencies that are going to pass, while these are all the frequencies that are going to be rejected. Next, I'm going to add my actual curve, showing the, the roll off at negative three dB. And there's my body plot for this high pass filter. Again, the ideal curve is in blue, the green is the actual curve. Here's a second example. Well, we have a high pass RL filter. We're gonna calculate the critical frequency the output voltage V out at the critical frequency for an input voltage of eight volts, the phase shift, and lastly, draw the body plot. So here's the critical frequency. This is from the formulas shown on the pre previous slides. You're gonna plug in your values for L and R and get a critical frequency of 19.89 kilohertz. At the critical frequency, we know that V out is going to be 70.7% .7 of V in and the phase shift is going to be 45 degrees. For our Bode plot, here are the labels. There's my critical frequency, because remember it was calculated to be 19.89 kilohertz. This is 10 kilohertz, this is 20 kilohertz, so 19 is about in this range. I'm going to also label 10% of FC. Add our decibel level, uh, labels and our output voltage labels. Our line at 0 dB, our line at negative 20 dB. And now we can add our two points where we're going to connect to make the ideal curve. 
there's my ideal curve. And then we're going to show the actual curve showing the negative 3 dB roll off. And there's my body plot. I can see that everything beyond the critical frequency here is going to pass. All right, and for the next example, we have the high pass filter shown below. We're going to find the value of C so that XC is approximately 10 times less than R at an input frequency of 10 kilohertz. So we have a lot of information in this problem. Make sure you write down or highlight the important things and make sure you clearly understand what you're supposed to find. In this case, we're trying to find a value of C that fits the description on the screen. We want XC to be approximately 10 times less than R when the input frequency is 10 kilohertz. So here's my formula for XC, one over two pi FC. I'm gonna fill in what I know. I know that XC should be 10 times less than R. So 680 divided by 10 gives me 68. I know the frequency that I want to use is 10 kilohertz. So I plug that in for F. Now I have one equation with one unknown. I can solve that for C and get approximately 0.234 microfarads. So this example is just being able to manip manipulate the equations given to find an unknown value. And for the last problem, we have a high pass filter. If a five volt sine wave is applied, what is the output voltage, magnitude, and phase shift? So we're going to set up a voltage divider. And we're going to use our equation for phase shift right here. 